Chapter 5, Undefeated, From Warrior to Peacemaker, My Story. Back in 2019, I was watching what would be one of the small miracles of the universe, but it meant nothing. I was numb. The beautiful orange sun's hues melting on the majestic Nile River alongside the tree leaves did not ignite my usual awe or imagination. My loved ones became just names. I went through the motions in my work despite landing on a most exciting assignment. I was just pretending to be. Isn't this one of our superpowers too? Many of us have become both Oscar and boxing championship material. Having a charming smile that hides the fighting and pushing to the side of incredible inner chaos. I thought this numbness was a temporary byproduct of my thin willingness to live. See, up until late 2018, I had zero recollection of my child's sexual abuse. Nevertheless, the sexual abuse left its deep imprint since I could ever make sense of the world. I had this continuous sense of emptiness, not belonging and ongoing confusion. I was unable to recognize abuse, even if it screamed at me, and was incapable of forming deep relationships. I had a very limited range of emotions, trying hopelessly to understand how I should feel about situations with many mysterious and long-standing illnesses. I continuously pulled those states of being and became a master at achieving anything I set my mind on. To the outside world, I was successful. Prestigious jobs, a lawyer in niche law firms, before switching to development with the World Bank Group, solid multidisciplinary education and diplomas, fluency in three languages, good track record in amateur acting, directing, and writing, which took me to different countries, 100 plus paintings, and blessed with friends from different walks of life across the globe. These attempts to give my life value were far from enough. This pushed me toward a journey of self-discovery where I started building a new foundation for myself with the help of amazing healers. I learned that I disassociate myself from my emotions as a way to cope, that I take on far too many responsibilities and that I do not see myself or my needs. Many interesting changes happened and I became relatively more satisfied with life. But then I hit a frustrating invisible wall where I was constantly falling against the growing sense of anger and resentment with setbacks in the health department. I still persevered and tried new ideas to deal with this poison. And probably because I was relatively more secure in myself, I started recovering some child sexual abuse memories. Memories I locked deep for 30 plus years. Life started making sense and I was excited to uncover the lining of this invisible wall. I thought I saw the entire world back then. I bought all the books I could find on the topic, understood what I was getting myself into, and called on trusted friends to share the information. Soldiering my way through things and not being in touch with the inner chaos inside, I didn't recognize that I had rejected life completely. That was also coupled with a close friend's betrayal, a classic theme for us survivors, and some family drama, genuine life and death situations, which were all beyond my window of tolerance, as they call it in somatic experience. I tried to reignite the spark, but I was numb towards everything. It was not the hysterical pain that I'm adept at hiding to the outside world, where terminating my life seemed the only kind of option. Paradoxically, just towing with the idea in those states would usually bring me back to life. I was in a different place altogether where I was also numb to pain or the lack of it. My nightly habit at the end of those very busy days was to look at the bedroom ceiling for hours. Maybe this seeming state of resignation would give me some answers, inspiration, and hope. But there was nothing. And with that came the decision to end my life, which I approached scientifically. I researched methods and decided what would work best. To rehearse my way through the end, I visualized the process and reached the stage where my body was carried away. To 
This is when a tiny voice screamed with revolt. I will not be defeated. I will not be defeated. It was not a Hollywood moment where I went dancing in the rain with a renewed lease on life, not at all. It was a moment of determination in the direction of life. It took me two years of struggle of staying alive, but that tiny precious voice kept me here. I tried every modality I came across. Some were very useful, some were a waste of time. But each brought me one step closer to where I wanted to be. In that journey, I had to relinquish my constant need to recover all the memories I buried. Not easy for my Sherlock Holmes inclinations. I learned that everything is stored in the body and that there are many ways of working with emotions and body sensations, which are far more important than constructing the story of who, what, how, why, and when. I learned that healing is about changing how I react to the past in the present moment, not about the story of how it happened. Not to diminish those with a story who want to recount it. My path is just different. I understood we're all human. Not to excuse destructive behavior, but to understand we're all perpetrators in different ways. I have not molest molested children, but being passive aggressive, overly helpful to others, abruptly cutting relationships, or not recognizing my own needs is a form of being a criminal too. I know this is a tricky point, and how much I hated the healers who pushed me to forgive. But we cannot be whole unless we accept ourselves and others. This is in my book, Different from Forgiveness. I started to allow more feelings to come in. I learned how to deal with the constant disassociation. I stopped judging my, myself when I disassociated. I can actually appreciate how I resort to it when situations become too intense for my window of tolerance. I started to open up to people. I realized that I haven't lived my life despite all my grand achievements. I was just hiding from life in the I'm now taking slow and small steps to be out here, out there and live. I'm recognizing in increments that life is not about what's out there, but what's in here. The only worthwhile achievement is to feel present and content in the moment. I'm taking more risks with my work and life. I don't need to be a zillion percent sure of myself before doing anything. Now I can do things beyond my comfort zone, including writing this chapter. Speaking of moving beyond the comfort zone, in early 2022, I established an advocacy and artistic platform on Facebook and YouTube on child sexual abuse impact on adult women. I wanted to start this platform in late 2019 as an artistic project to scream about my pain and alert society of this undiagnosed cancer. The spark was a horrifying newspaper story about a child who was continuing, continuously molested by her uncle and ended up dying of wounds her grandmother inflicted on her to protect the uncle. I know you will be reading that last uh, sentence many times because something is wrong with its construction. Unfortunately, the sentence is true. This is why I wanted to scream it out to the world. But then my mother was diagnosed with terminal ovarian cancer and I had COVID and then long COVID and I had to postpone the project for quite some time. The project then morphed into something I appreciate more following many iterations and discussions. It's now a platform that simplifies information on child sexual abuse's impact on adult women to help women understand why they feel this way and know that they are not alone. Available information in Arabic is scarce and I wanted to share what I know with others who wouldn't have the same access to information. Art remains a component of this work with a song and dance released and more to come. But with more inner work, I want to still scream my pain, but also ignite hope. Creating this page was not a walk in the park. I stopped posting after a while and I was growing uncomfortable. It took me time to understand why. I'm not a therapist and I make it very clear on the page. I just wanted to only share information that was relatable to me. I did not want to take responsibility for information I haven't lived, like marriage or children. All I needed was to say that I'm in the same boat without providing details since I'm a private individual. And to break out of that was terrifying, to say the least. That night, when I decided to break the silence publicly, 
I failed maybe nine videos and I couldn't sleep. I felt stigmatized by the entire world and imagined being rejected by my family, fired from work, and many more dramatic thoughts. Nothing happened. I survived to write about it and share with you my practice. The practice. With everything I tried, I learned that gentle is key. Remember, I always sold you my way through things. I always look for a solution. That's not bad in itself. Pushing can be very beneficial when done at the right time. But overdoing it makes life unbearable. It's being in a constant state of fighting with self. Now my solution is not to look for a solution. And the key to this is to accept and make peace with whatever state you're in. In other terms, learn to relax where you are. This way you create space for things to reveal themselves of change and also create genuine inner strength. I know it sounds like rainbows and unicorns, but it isn't. Sometimes relaxing is accepting being in deep pain and not rushing to find a fix for it. When I started to recognize that I couldn't move forward except by relaxing, I gave it a go. Before I take you through it, I want to assure you that I know this practice can solve in something or nonsense effect. This is how I felt about it when it was presented to me by different guides and books. What does it mean to relax? How can I relax? How can I not be hyper vigilant at all times to protect myself from anything and everything? Will I make myself pray to the universe and allow myself to relax? I was always waiting for the other shoe to drop, and relaxing meant the entire universe would drop. Relaxing can be very scary. It's the antithesis of everything we've lived, known, and experienced. As convoluted as it may sound, we seek comfort in what we know, even if it's pain, fear, and uh, fear and limitations. At least we know what to expect. And we can defend ourselves. But speak of the absence of parameters when we enter a new world, not bound by fear, calculations, hypervigilance, and expectations of the worst. Sometimes relaxing means relaxing in the face of your terror, triggered by happiness. I know, another seemingly paradoxical statement, but it's more common than you think. I'm still learning to navigate that world, but it does make a hell, or maybe a heaven, of difference. Learning to relax is a journey that can be achieved with others and alone. With others, you can learn to practice martial arts, yoga, meditation, somatic experiencing, and have massages, all of which I'm a huge advocate of because they build your resilience and teach you to befriend your body. What I want to show you here is something you can do on your own, wherever and whenever you are. We face difficult emotions or obsessive thoughts many times during the day, including when we're with others. This is a muscle I invite you to build, so you can practice it anywhere. I will preface it by saying that there is no one formula that works for everyone, and that there are many variations of this exercise depending on where you are on your inner journey. I'll give you suggestions for many things you can do. Do not get discouraged if you end up even more angry when trying to relax. That is very normal, actually. Just take a break and try it again later. Step one. Notice, we cannot relax if we don't see the emotions, thoughts, tension, and anxiety we're holding. We're so used to the discomfort that, that we're not seeing it. From my experience, the more I remove layers, the more I'm surprised about how I hold tension and discomfort in ways that are so normalized, I don't feel it. Step two, name it. Giving things a name helps us better deal with them. Just tell yourself, for example, okay, I'm holding tension in this area of my body. I am having this bout of allergy because I don't feel comfortable, or I feel angry. If you don't know how to name it, just say, I am uncomfortable. Step three, accept and acknowledge. Do not fight with whatever is happening. I know it's tricky. If we feel sad or in pain, whether emotionally or in our body, we want to change that feeling as soon as possible. Changing it means fighting with it and giving it more importance. This produces more tension. We can also find those uncomfortable states through spiritual bypass or denying them by pretending we're over the feeling or that the feeling doesn't even exist. This is another form of fighting the self because then we pretend things that are happening aren't happening. And no surprise, we end up exploding. It's important to acknowledge that you feel like shit and pain and lucky or whatever that feeling may be. If you want to give yourself the opposite message, such as in the method of fake it until you make it, which I use a lot, you can only do it successfully when you acknowledge that you feel whatever you're feeling, 
first. Step four, shift your attention. Rather than fight it, keep whatever you're feeling as it is. In some practices, you'll be told to sit with the feeling until it goes away, because ultimately, it does. I'm suggesting something different here so you can implement it in the middle of a work meeting, party, or whatever situation you're in. For example, you have neck tension. Acknowledge the tension, and then look for something else in your body that doesn't hurt. Direct your attention there, or direct your attention to something nice in the room. And here are some tips to help you shift your attention. Intentional breathing. I'm not talking about yogic breath, but just a simple breath to remind you and your body that you're not in danger. Take a break, sorry, a breath, when you recognize the state of being when you don't like it. Find similar colors. Close your eyes, count to 10, and then open them. Try to find 10 items of the same color once you open your eyes. Touch your body gently or kiss it. We have a history of loathing our bodies, which has become part of who we are. We don't even know what it means to not loathe it. It's helpful to give ourselves and bodies a message of safety. You can kiss it like this. Eh? Very powerful. Keep repeating as needed. Sometimes you need to do this 50 times a day. When I am in an obsessive mode, whether feelings or thoughts, I can repeat the color exercise five times in a row. With this, I want to acknowledge your pain and remind you that you're not alone. Just surviving child sexual abuse does not mean actually living life. We all have that innate capacity to live life and enjoy its different views. Gladly, we are in a time and age where it's easier to break the silence and help each other find tools that, they, that can take us back into the richness of life. I love you.